Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to revisit some of these extended techniques that I've been talking about these last several years. Uh, I've done some videos on all of these techniques, but uh, today I've got a number of cameras set up, so hopefully this will help with a lot of the questions that I've gotten about these things, and you'll be able to see a close-up view and exactly what I'm doing. I've, uh, Like I said, I've had a lot of people ask me to do this kind of close-up video thing. So I got five cameras uh, set up, four and an overhead, so that should be enough, I think. And we'll play some of these clips over with different views for you so you can see what's going on. So I did several different kinds of techniques there. Uh, we'll go through them one by one. Uh, the first one, everybody knows, is the Muller technique, which is basically this. Obviously, that's a slow version of it. So that technique, as you learned from my other videos, uh, occurs when the elbow goes out and the stick comes up and then the elbow comes in and then the stick comes down. It's a very simple way of putting it, but it's kind of a whip stroke where you're not moving up like straight up and down, but you're moving like a sidearm motion. So you see that motion. It's almost like a pitching kind of motion where you're doing that. Okay, it creates velocity is what it what it does. It's a very powerful stroke. Some people play like this naturally. Uh, you can see it in the way they. Uh, uh, they play. You know, a great example of that, Omar Hakim, he's really long arms, tall guy. When I first saw him play in New York years and years and years ago, I saw him playing like that. And I'm not sure he learned that from anyone. I think that's just a natural thing. Even guys like, uh, uh, rest in peace, Taylor Hawkins. I loved his playing. And he played like that. He had that beautiful stroke. He could play so hard like that. So I think, obviously, for him, that was a natural thing that he probably picked up from watching some other guys. So uh, let's let's talk about that with both hands, and we'll put on the metronome here. A good tempo to practice this slow is around 90. You need to get a little speed on it so you're getting some rebound. It is built on rebound. One thing you want to remember is there's going to be a little bit of a delay between this stroke and the rest of the strokes. That disappears when you play faster. So normally this is used for fast playing. So when we go back to that original tempo, that delay will disappear. You see how that disappears. It's okay to have the delay at first because you're, you're, you know, you're starting out. You're learning it. That's what's going on. So once again, the first stroke you're throwing, and the rest of them are rebounds. You can even use it for kind of a triple stroke roll. The next technique I want to demonstrate that you saw in that original demo is the push-pull technique. Uh, lots of drummers use this. It goes way back. I first saw Kenward Denard do it in New York in the 1980s. And uh, the way that you do that is you drop the stick and the fingers end up extended like this and then you pull them back. So,
Now the wrist is going to move as well, like that. So there is wrist movement here. There is no arm movement. That's not to be confused with the Muller technique. All right. So the way you do that, once again, you can even do it with your left hand. And there I'm using my is a traditional grip, obviously. You can easily do it with your left hand matched, like that. But here I'm using my fingers, my top fingers, and my thumb is coming down. And the, the second note will have a little bit of an accent, so. And All right, so that's a couple different ways that you can do that. Another thing you saw me do there in that demo, uh, well, this is something I call faking it. <laughs> and uh, when I lived in New York, I had to play really, really fast tempos. We would do all kinds of um, old Clifford Brown tunes like Parisian Thoroughfare and Cherokee and all that stuff. And uh, those were like kind of standards back then. And well, they still are. But uh, the way to play that kind of stuff, it's just too fast. You know, Max Roach played on obviously the Clifford Brown records um, and and also Cherokee on those on that record. And the way to do it is to actually uh, uh, press into the head. Now you can make tempos up to this fast, you know, pretty easily. And again, I've done videos on that too. That's just fingers. But when you have to go faster, like 360 or so, you got to kind of press in and not use your fingers. So it might look like I'm using my fingers, but I'm just using the bounce and I'm picking the stick up. All right, so that's an option on the symbol. And the way that looks slowly, again, no fingers. It's just a bounce, a rebound. And when I say slowly, if I do it this slow, you may not see it. Well, maybe that'll help. Let's look. And we'll speed up. All right, so my fingers are all together, nothing sticking out. That's a bad habit. You don't want to do that. Keep them together, but they're off the stick in this case. And you're tightening up your grip here, okay? And then you're moving your wrist. And like uh, when I play fast bop, I'm not necessarily keeping my hand stiff like that, all right? I'm moving in a circle. See how that's moving like that? But this particular kind of technique, you don't do that.
uh, some good records to practice with. Well, there's a really good one to practice with uh, by Sonny Rollins called Tour de Force. Max Roach is on that one as well. There's a tune called Be Swift, and I think there's a tune called Be Quick. Those are some of the fastest tunes you ever play. They're in the 360, 370 um, area. All right, so if you want to be able to make those tempos, these are little tricks to help you do that. So that's another technique that I used. Um, so these are things that I call extended techniques. You should know them uh, for to a certain extent. They're not necessarily to make a living, they're just helpful for playing certain things. If you're playing a lot of Brazilian music, that push-pull is really essential. Or even kind of a bounce thing. has the added benefit of being perpetual motion, so you can play any time signature or any um, kind of polyrhythm over it. See, those are triplets. We can do fives. All right, things like that work um, work pretty well. So that's, that's the one I use the most, that push-pull. I use that all the time. So I hope this helps. Uh, one more little thing. I played a little there. This I don't know if I consider this extend technique, but crutches, where I play into the head like that. So so what that is, that's a flam, but you're buzzing both notes. You're not playing together. That kind of cancels itself out. You need to do a slight flam. So that's a flam, and then you buzz both notes. And that's a one-handed buzz where you're, you know, kind of a sloppy little thing. It's great for second line drumming, any anything like, um, you know, old style. Even for some of the Brazilian samba things. All right, not really, uh, you know, great looking technique there, but it's an effect. So you do whatever you need to do to get the, the effect. All right, as long as you can play correctly when you need to. So I hope this helps answer some of these questions. I'm doing a series of these videos. I think this is part five, maybe, um, just to uh, answer some of these things that people have been asking over the last couple of years. I just haven't gotten to it yet. And this may be the last one. I think I have one more. I think I'm going to do... Uh, rolls, uh, closed rolls, because a lot of you have asked about that. So uh, once again, we'll see you next time. Thanks.